And after waiting for 15 minutes and camera issues, we finally had a chance to actually sit down together. And here we are. And here we are. We're going to have a nice conversation about so many things. I was sitting in the middle of everyone yesterday and I was gasping towards the emotional you know, trauma that I've seen. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Bleaching Syndrome. Bleaching Syndrome. That was her film yesterday. Where, um, we saw it exactly at, what, 7 o'clock? I, I think I can't remember the timing, actually. But, uh, um, the show, uh, Made in Qatar 2, started yesterday at around 7.15. Yeah, 7.15. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I'm really glad to have you here. So, uh, Iman, how are you? I'm great. Yeah. I'm great. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. Is this your second film in a jail or your first film? What's, uh, um, what's so your story? So, my story is... Um, this is my second film. Okay. Um, the first film I made uh, was a film I made in 2017. It was a very short crime drama called Is That All There Is? Okay. So I'm here in Ajial now this year with the short documentary The Bleaching Syndrome. Okay. Which is a, um, a very personal short, short documentary that I made uh, uh, this summer. Yeah. Um, and this film is about um, the epidemic of skin bleaching in Sudanese society. Okay. A specific in Sudanese society or in general? Like, uh, um, I specified it to the Sudanese society, even though skin bleaching is found in many other Arab countries, uh, Arab countries and many other countries around the world. Yeah. Um, like in India, skin bleaching is a huge issue. Okay. In Jamaica as well. So it's a, it's a problem that you know you can find in many other countries. But I chose to specify to the Sudanese society because that's where I come from and yeah. that's the place I know best. Um, so the film is about my own experiences with skin bleaching growing up um, and through that journey I try to paint a portrait of uh, what it means to be a, uh, a person of color yeah. uh, living in the Arab world today. You felt there was a lot of pressure and you felt um, I also, you know, I can relate to that because growing up also as a person who's kind of brown, kind of white, you don't know where you are. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like in a mix. And you always get weird comments like, are you actually Sudanese? You know what I mean? And, and why are you so light-skinned? You know what I mean? You get that comment and then you wonder, you're like, okay, you know, Sudan is a very large country. It has so many ethnic groups in it. But then sometimes you explain, sometimes you're not bothered to explain. I mean, you should do your own research. I shouldn't just sit there and tell you, you know if we're white or if we're black. You know? Yeah, but, yeah. But yeah. Um, also growing up in Sudan at a young age, I actually did notice that, um, the whole bleaching thing. A lot of women would go to the store and they would buy all these creams. Yeah. And some of them would actually take it, you know, on a loan because they can't afford it and they spend so much buying it on this skincare. And I'm like, why, what's wrong with your color? You know, as a young kid, because I was like, why are they doing this? They're very nice shiny brown skin colors. And, and more than that, the, the the products that they're using are very harmful. Yeah. You know, in the research that I've done in making this film, I have found, uh, I found out about cases in which a lot of the popular creams that people use in Sudan um, are cancerous. Okay. Um, I met a girl who, who did extensive research on this and she told me about a family who lost a young girl because she had liver failure because oh, of the creams that she uses. So uh, more than that, they're very harmful. Yeah. But, and that's why I set out to make this film is why would you put yourself in that kind of risk because yeah. you're literally, as a friend of mine had told me, like imagine you're you're burning your own heart or your lung yeah. you know that's what you're doing to your skin so why do people do it um, and what I came to realize it's the same reason that I kind of felt pressured to do it when I was 13 and um, my aunt had given me skin bleaching creams it's because I felt like I didn't fit in to a point where it shook my my confidence it yeah. shook my a belief in myself and um, it triggered what was going on in your head when someone gave when someone gave you that you know, at that age it, it made me um, yeah. at first I was confused but at the same time you know like growing up um, I was the darkest in my family and I had sisters that were fairer than me they had softer hair so yeah. I felt like um, people had a problem with my dark skin, with my curly hair. Yeah. And what went on in my head when I was given these a problem products like is in the sense of not being accepted, it, or a problem exactly. of like why do you look that way? Or exactly, exactly, like something is wrong with me that needed to be fixed. Yeah. yeah. And um, 
that made me feel bad but I used these creams because you know I felt like something was wrong with me that needed to be fixed when a yeah. group of pe people all tell you the same thing you start to feel like it's true yeah and that's what went on with me for a couple of years until I grew up and realized like no uh, and I started to accept my blackness and my identity and who I am um, but yeah, as you can imagine, as a young 13-year-old girl... You'd have a lot of issues. Yeah, yeah. It, um, it was difficult. It was hard. And especially in their world, there's a very um, narrow mind opinion towards dark-skinned people. Yeah. You know, they're like, they're not beautiful, they're, um, their hair is messy, and, and nobody actually wants to be associated with them, you know what I mean? The fact that... Especially we, as kids. Yeah. And, yeah. and the fact that uh, we don't have great representation of people of color in yeah. Arab media, like blackface is still a thing, true, you know? True. Blackface in some countries is considered a hate crime. True. And well, it could tell you your face is black in a sense that you did something bad, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I yeah. Hate that, like yeah. you've committed a crime. You know? And they tell you your face is white. <laughs> that as if you did something good, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so I, I think it stems from when, you know, our countries have been colonized yeah. by by Western countries, by white people, yeah. that there's this image of if you're white, then you're more powerful, you're more socially accepted, you're yeah. more beautiful, and th that still exists today, yeah. you know, as yeah. much as people try to brush it off and say, oh, there's no racism, there is, yeah. there is, and, and, and it's this... It's, it's all of these issues that lead to things like skin bleaching um, because you know it's like how much can a person take when for so many years you're being told you know all these negative things pretty. about yourself and at the same time the situation around you is not helping you know we don't have a lot of uh, um, people of color that are represented in a positive way in our media especially in Sudan also you feel like most also if you look at it most of the women who are in media also they're very fair or light skin yeah so you don't really get a proper representation of like certain most of the ones that are on TV they have very let's say Arab features but then yet again not so African features yeah and then that somehow sends a signal to these young girls that in order for you to be successful or in order for you to be some sort of a figure you'd need to have these kind of features yeah and I, as a young kid I would sit and watch TV and I would be like why is her face so light and her hands are very dark <laughs> uh, you know what I mean like, and I would ask these questions and because you look at the hands they're very brown and the face is very light no that's true and picking up as a young kid I'm like is there an issue why do you have to do that especially because your color is very beautiful it's very shiny it's very, um, but then it's very hard for you to get such awareness when you realize that your family is doing the same thing, when your neighbors are doing the same thing, um, the whole freaking country is doing the same thing. So there's no one who's actually fighting for that. Recently, I've seen people such as you and also previous who took it in consideration that um, they should really uh, fight this idea, you know, like, but for the past 20 years, there was nobody actually anti the idea of bleaching creams, you know? Yeah, I, I think as we're all becoming a little more globalized and yeah. more aware of our social conditions, then people do start to speak up about it. It's still very difficult. Like, making True. this film was really hard because nobody wanted to speak to me about this, you know? Really? Like, even my Sudanese friends, you know, like, who are open-minded and everything, when I would tell them, oh, you know, I need your help, can you talk about this? They'd be like, no way. Why so? Like, they're like, no, we don't talk about these things. It's very taboo. We know it, it's considered very taboo. Yeah. I mean, it's taboo for a number of reasons. Number yeah. one, because mm -hmm. there's no, there's nobody talking about it. But also number two, it's like, how can you admit, you know, that that you you aren't happy with yourself? You know, it's it's embarrassing. I, yeah. I think you know. To be honest, not to lie to you, I kind of just to be real, as as I like to be as real as it is in the podcast. Yesterday, I did feel uncomfortable. Mm. Um, as, as a man who also have um, being from Sudan trying to figure out what his identity is yeah. especially you know uh, when there's like remarks that you know you're associated with slavery if you're dark and stuff like that I kind of felt uncomfortable I started looking at people around me to see how do they look at me yeah. you get what I'm saying I don't know if it's a psychological thing but I just started looking left and right and I was like are they actually looking at me the same way like that yeah. you know what I mean and then my inner conscience was like but you're kind of, you know, you're very light skin, so you get away with it. Do you get what I'm saying? They started, I started feeling uncomfortable in my own skin, you mm -hmm. know, because 
the issue was addressed in the room. The elephant was in the room and I was sitting there staring at the elephant and I realizing that I'm a part of this elephant. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then I actually felt very uncomfortable. So realizing how your friends would, would react, I kind of kind of sensed it. Not, But for me, I would talk about it. Yeah. That's why I really made sure that you come here on this table because it's a very important matter as, as, as young people growing up in the Middle East. You need to be proud of yourself. You know what I mean? Of course. You know, like, I, I totally understand what you mean. Making yeah. this film, there were times where I felt uncomfortable, you know, when yeah. you're surrounded by so many people telling you you can't. You can't talk about. Nobody's gonna talk to you. Nobody, yeah. nobody talks about this, and I felt uncomfortable, especially you know having to go in front of the camera and talk about it myself. Yeah. But then I realized something, and I and this um, my 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 film mentor Riti Pan. Um, he's a great documentary filmmaker. Right. He was the one that pushed me because he said, "This is how things get done. Yeah. You know, you need to talk about these things," which yeah. is why like. I hope that, you know, so many people yesterday who watched the film told me the same thing. They're like, I feel so uncomfortable, but I'm so glad that you spoke about it and someone spoke about it. It's very brave. So I, I hope that, you know, it inspires, you know, if it inspires at least one person yeah. to be honest with yourself and be honest with others because, you know, like... Uh, as much as you try to brush something under the rug, when you keep doing it, eventually you're gonna see that bump on the rug. You know, it's it's there. To be it's honest, there and you can't hide it. Like relating to what you were saying, um, just to say that when I was growing up, uh, you know, you'd go to school and then you'd get a lot of these questions like, "Why are you so light?" You know, I'd feel uncomfortable. You know what I mean? I like. It. Well, what does it matter if I'm light or dark for you? You know what I mean? And and then when they know, you're like, for example, you're from Sudan, they'd be like. Okay, but you don't look so Sudanese. Then you get treated differently. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I'd see other kids who are from Sudan, but then they have different features. And then they get different badly. Mm. Treated badly. I would get treated better. Just because I look different. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and growing up, okay, not lying, I was enjoying that privilege because I was like, all right, at least I'm not being bullied, right? Growing up, I was like, why are they treating these kids this way? And I really actually don't like it. You know, I it, it took a sense to me because sometimes, let's say, you know, I'd spend a couple hours in the sun and then I'd get really cooked out and I'd get, then the treatments start changing. And I'm like, hmm, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and and also in your family, you would notice this treatment. Sometimes the fair, the light-skinned ones would get treated better. They'd yeah. be like, okay, you're, you have a chance to hire of getting married, having a better, you know, but in the dark ones, you'd feel treated. And I feel like it's a psychological thing related to our community as Sudanese people because we post-colonialism and all that that made us very uncomfortable and then also um, the turmoil that Sudan been through politically geographically it, we're like a bunch of races just mashed up together and we don't know how to coexist within them or within ourselves you know yeah so to, sign, to find producers like you and people who actually want to send a positive message and awareness uh, um, it actually shakes me and it makes me happy you know and I'm being real with you you know because um, I don't compliment, really. Okay. People who did on the podcast, <laughs> I'm being real. And I didn't want to have anyone with me on the show because I felt like it's a personal matter. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, tell me about the steps throughout the film. Um, how did you manage to do it? What came up with like this, the idea? I know the story behind it, but like the practical ideas. Where did you get support from? Where did you, you know? Um, so... Like I said, you know, this is this whole this whole idea has been part of my life for as long as I can yeah. remember. Yeah. Um, the opportunity came uh, this past summer when uh, the Doha Film Institute had their annual documentary workshop. Yeah. So it's a documentary filmmaking lab where they bring in a mentor, okay. and you get to make a short film in the process and learn how to make documentaries and so on. All right. Luckily, this year they brought us Rithi Pan. And um, yeah, so we were supported by the Doha Film Institute and um, creatively Rithi was there to kind of guide us through the process and explain to us how documentaries are made, but in a way where he did not really meddle with our creative process, you know? All right. He's a very tough man, you know? He's like, this is what I think you, you should do, but it's up to you, you know? So he gave us freedom in that sense, but yeah. he was still very supportive. and. Um, so the DFI supported us through the making of that. It took us six weeks to make the film. And um, I also got support from a, f 
very few friends who agreed to help yeah. and um, my family as well my dad is one of the people that I spoke to in the film um, I tried to find um, a subject who would uh, who uses these products here in Doha, yeah. um, a Sudanese person. Yeah. And um, as you saw in the film, she was there for a short while, but then it yeah. didn't work out. Um, but she agreed, and I decided to leave that part of her being in the film, but then dropping out halfway through. Yeah. Because I think she represents a really important part of this issue. Um, in our community, which is that we are afraid to talk about it. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, it's up to you. It's your own personal life. If you want to discuss these things or not, but know that you are part of a bigger problem. You know, by doing so. You're help conveying, conveying, conveying a very strong message that maybe you could help actually change. But some people they don't think about it that way, right? They no, they they don't. They don't. But um. You know, I, I, and I still think it's going to take, you know, a very long time and drastic measures for us to move forward. But at least now we can see a little more openness and people are starting to be a little bit more aware of the situation, which for me, you know, is more than I can ask for. Like I said, if I can inspire just one person, then my job's done. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. You know, um, so because noticing a lot of people are having a conversation afterwards throughout the film and they were like okay so if you address these problems are you going to change a whole nation are you going to actually end racism and I was like look no. we're not aiming to end, end racism we're just aiming to uh, focus on an issue and then from there on uh, we would actually find practical solutions right maybe put some civil laws in the state that can ban such creams um, you know actually make it more strict for them to be imported to the country raise awareness right yeah. um, so people c because if you educate people about these creams forget the racism part let's just look at it also from the biological part if you educate these people how bad these creams are and then people within themselves they'll stop right because nobody wants to have skin cancer let's be honest yeah um, educated or not educated you wouldn't unless you want to you know even if you do want to look like Michael Jackson but you don't have Michael Jackson money to get you know a proper medical help so especially in Sudan because there's no medical help. yeah so for me I felt like, no, I was actually defending this. I was like, why not? What's stopping you from doing it? She's doing a goal, and this goal is actually to enhance a situation in our society. A situation that wasn't talked about for years, such as the idea of women also in hijab, the idea of women going out, um, doing what they love, um, cutting off old gender rolling, the idea of also religion. You know what I mean? Yeah. Topics that are not being discussed, and they're causing a lot of issues within our society. Yeah. I think um, an, also an important part of what the film represents is yeah. the psychological impact that all of these issues can create on a person, you yeah. know? Um, of course, you know, like, we, we should never forget our physical health and, and remind people that, you know, these creams are harmful in that sense. Um, but also, understand that you know, it's, it's part of a psychological problem that we are having in which uh, because of our history and our trauma that we are trying to buy into this idea just in order to belong when we should just really accept who we are and, uh, and through that empower ourselves so that we can be able to come together and create a better political climate for ourselves. And that's what I hope that people will take from this, is also the psychological impact yeah. that um, all these issues can have on one's mental health as Cause well. Because I, I felt like watching you yesterday, like it, it did cause you a lot of emotional issues growing up. I've seen that in your face throughout the film, right? And I was like, okay, this, this girl really been through a lot, you know? Uh, f like forgetting the person who's with you in the film, I focused on you also a bit, because you know, you're half Egyptian as you told me, right? Uh, you grew up in Egypt also, I believe. Um, no, I mainly grew up here in Doha. I've been to Egypt a few times. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Who's, who's the Egyptian you from? My mother is Egyptian. My father is Sudanese. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Did you find acceptance or no acceptance in the Egyptian community? Um, like from family sides also? I mean, I think when I was younger, I did not. Yeah. Um, Even from family members? I mean, 
no i mean of course you know yeah. my family would accept me but still you know like they would say things to me that would kind of rub me off the wrong way and as a result i distant i distant myself yeah from you know my sudanese identity and my egyptian identity true um because i felt intimidated by both of those sides yeah both sides um but it wasn't until i grew older and i decided that you know it really doesn't matter what other people think of me as long as i'm happy with me then yeah. who cares about everybody else and that's when i realized when when you when you show that kind of acceptance within yourself other people will accept you yeah you know um so as i grew older yes you know like it, it became easier but when i was younger it was very difficult and you would hear some sometimes comments that are pointed out towards you indirectly. Like sometimes they don't mean it, but then when it comes off, it would, it would really piss you off like, you know? Yeah, yeah, like things like, for example, if I would go swimming with yeah. my sisters when we're younger, my mother would always make sure, like, Iman, put on sunscreen, you know, and okay. like not really bother my other sisters as much because she, she my, yeah. my mother was always afraid of me becoming darker than I already was okay um, things like that you know and also things like you know people directing compliments at my sisters that they're the most beautiful of the Mirghanis because okay, you know lighter. they're lighter skinned so you know that was indirect but it's still you know it's like why aren't why isn't anyone telling me all these yeah. things what's wrong with my skin yeah. you know um, so it was indirect but you know like children pay attention to these things yeah uh, people pay attention to these things, so yeah. uh, you have to be careful yeah. about that. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, keep talking. I'm just uh, telling. You. <laughs> it's but, fine. but yeah, watching watching the film also throughout it. Um, did you feel like um, what's the comments that you heard afterwards after the movie from certain people, like questions? Um. Uh, from any uh, everybody or like well, like certain people you've been around or something. Like that. Okay. Um, like for me, for example, I've done a couple of documentaries, and then when I go out and you hear some kids like, "Really? What did you come up with this idea? How do you feel about it?" You know <laughs> what I mean? Like you could see it in their face. Yeah. It, what, yeah. Did you notice anyone special with some like weird comments that made you go home like, "Hmm." I mean, one thing that I that a lot of people tell me like when when they came and spoke to me um, about the film after they've seen it. Yeah. The first thing is that. They didn't know about the issue about skin bleaching, yeah. So, and they were happy to learn about it. So that made me happy that at least yeah. these people are now a little bit aware. Yeah. But the other thing that people would also tell me is, um, oh, but you know, we love Sudanese people. Yeah. You know, there's nothing wrong with you guys, mm. which for me is a little bit problematic. You know, okay. especially coming from uh, Arabs, like white Arabs. Yeah, it's a little bit problematic because there's I there's this idea that you know yeah. we're all one, we're all brothers and sisters. Rabbina khalaqna kullina zaybad and all that, which is true, yeah. but you know you're not helping the situation by telling me that we're all the same yeah I, wh what i want is for people to acknowledge that there is a problem true and 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 like raise more awareness by by explaining this you know like by by spreading the word like there is a problem we should be more aware of it we should not pretend like oh we're all the same and we all love you like okay i thank you i thank you for for saying that but you you don't I'm not I'm not gonna feel good when you tell me this you yeah, know yeah. I want you to acknowledge that there is a problem that you understand it fully and um, yeah. and that's the way that we can move forward I think you know what I also got another problem and that problem is um, and it goes also the blame goes to within our own society right uh, because we also didn't get a chance to actually import our culture properly right? yeah we weren't really represented in media properly so a lot of people had a very stereotype vague idea of who we are right so for example because I had a couple of people that would come to me and they were like I never even knew Sudan had pyramids yeah uh, until <laughs> recently right yeah and, and then I don't blame them though it's not their fault because a major fault goes to us we never actually had a chance to work on ourselves 
Um, but now the you know the hope goes to the younger generation, people like you, people who actually want to convey a positive image of Sudan, and also convey a different image that contradicts with the stereotype idea that we're carried out about Sudan, whether how multi-ethnical we are, how diverse we are religiously, ethnically, and um, also geographically. You know what yeah. I mean? We we really want to do that. And, and it's up to us to do that. You know, like. If we're, if we're going to keep waiting for proper representation of Sudanese people to yeah. come, it's never going to happen. We yeah. need to be the ones to start that change. We need to be the ones to to bring proper representation to the Arab world, to the yeah. entire world, of who we really are. And that starts with us being honest with ourselves and putting ourselves out there in a positive light okay. in order to change the narrative. So when can they catch your film again? So uh, my film will be screening again uh, today, uh, December 2nd, and tomorrow, December 3rd, at uh, Novo Cinemas in the Pearl at 8.30 in the evening. Right. Um, the film is uh, part of the Made in Qatar program, Program 2. Um, so yeah, I'd love for anyone who's listening, <laughs> if you to guys want to come down and yeah. check it out, I'll be there um, to answer anybody's questions and... Um, Looking forward to more people seeing this film and spreading the word, hopefully, and getting inspired. Inshallah, I really love the film, and I do recommend people to actually go check it out. Uh, it was really um, something, you know, very touching. Um, before we wrap up, what's your future plans? You got any future plans? Uh, yeah, so uh, my next step is next week, actually. I'm going to start um, developing my next short uh, film with the Doha Film Institute. Um, it is a short uh, narrative film. Um, still um, haven't really set you know, a, t a date for it, but I'm hoping to start shooting it next year. Um, this uh, film is inspired by um, a lot of the feelings I went through while making this documentary and me trying to make peace with my identity and who I am um, all over again. Um, so that will be incorporated into this short film and hopefully okay. next year uh, people will get to see it. Inshallah, inshallah. Uh, we'll definitely hope while well, we're here next year to check it out. Thank you so much for coming over. Iman. Thank you. Really. Thank you guys so much for having me. We're, we're going to kick off season three, inshallah, in December. No, sorry, uh, in January. And uh, we definitely want to have a talk like this longer longer version i hope so i right. hope so looking forward to yeah, it i documented this on the camera just in case she says she's busy <laughs> no, i'll be here thank All you guys right. take care guys thank you